my gosh, Saturdays is just full of fun, and it's all thanks to A1 Pictures. We got two really awesome shows that are originals that are coming from them, and yeah, Saturdays are going to be packed going forward, but yes, I just got done watching the first episode of Licorice Recoil, which is a series that is airing in the summer 2022 anime season, again, done by A1 Pictures, an original, and... The really cool thing about the writing for this show is that it's being done by the Bento creator. <laughs> so, so you know you got some good writing behind that because I've heard nothing but good things from people about Bento. But anyways, <laughs> this is my thoughts on the first episode of Licorice Recoil. So let's jump right into it. Yeah, the PVs weren't going to fool me. Well, thankfully, because I checked out the synopsis for the series during our preview and I had a little bit of a hint there of like, what the heck are they talking about here? <laughs> Cute girls cafe and then oh yeah by the way there's some this this espionage stuff going on in the background and i'm like okay what's going on here so yeah sure enough when i started watching this show quickly <laughs> got super violent and i'm like okay i'm all on board <laughs> wait i am a huge fan of gunslinger girls and anything like cute girls guns so when i see in the opening of this show i'm like okay yeah i'm on board <laughs> like it was so weird too bizarre it's sh basically showing people like doing their daily lives in japan and just like randomly some person opens a bag and you can see a bomb in there and then somebody just comes by and goes pew pew it was like what the heck are we like no no let me be clear the cute girl walks by and goes pew pew like it's just so like there was just everybody just like assassinations happening all over the place what it's trying to establish in Licorice Recoil is that there's these people that are known as Licorice. And Licorice is, are essentially, so far it seems like, girls that are pretty much hired to take out situations before they become a situation. So they are the people that behind the scenes wipe out the threat before it even happens. So yeah, like I said before, you got a person looking in their bag at something suspicious. These girls come by and just end it. Like, make it, make it go away. And yes, technically... At the very beginning, getting to a huge situation where there is an arms deal going on, and this girl named Takena just shows up, pulls out this huge gun, and just starts mowing down the entire room. Unfortunately, her partner was in there, so that didn't end well for her, but it, again, gives this indication that these girls are hired to come into situations and stop them before they become a threat. And then later on, we get a little bit into the idea that these organizations that run the Licorice kind of hide whenever something bad happens. Like, every incident that happens becomes inspiration to the future or something like that. I mean, one thing to point out is that Chisato, one of the main girls of this show, she apparently was involved with this big happening that happened at this tower, which I think is the Tokyo Tower, but the idea is that, like, this big explosion happened, and instead of everybody kind of seeing it as this bad incident that happened, this threat that happened that was stopped by Chisato... They more see it now as a symbol of something, a symbol of hope or something like that. So like I said, it really getting heavy into the idea that there's these girls, they handle situations before they come bad situations, and at the same time, this organization, in return, covers up everything so that nobody knows exactly what happened. So it does give credit to this whole situation that we kind of open up this first episode with. Again, this Takana girl mows down this entire room. <laughs> it's seen as a really bad thing, but normally, as Chisato says later, normally nobody cares like they just cover it up and nobody in the public knows that yes yeah, she mowed down a whole room of people but because there's something happening in the background somebody's pulling strings they're kind of bending to somebody's power and so they get rid of Takana normally Takana would be fine like you you disobeyed orders that's fine but because there's somebody behind the scenes pulling strings it forces them to have to get rid of Takana and Takana ends up joining the liquidus department that Chisato's a part of she was at the big DA department. Now she's now a part of this small department that Chisato's a part of. But Takada, she's upset. She wants to go back to the DA. But she sees this also as an opportunity to learn something from Chisato because Chisato is very well known. Again, she was the one that everybody has these stories about that was involved with this big incident at the tower. So Chisato is seen as very skilled. And so she does want to learn something from her. Now, the thing that Takina does learn about Chisato now at this new department Chisato's kind of the opposite of Takana. So I think that's going to be the chemistry going forward. Takana, again, she technically sees as this is the logical conclusion. I'm just going to mow down the whole room. She's fine. In the end, my partner lived, but she disobeyed ordered, even though she believed that she did something to resolve the issue. Whereas Chisato sees things very differently. She's very more laid back. It seems like this apartment's not always focused on taking down people. It's more focused on community building and helping people. And... Additionally, Chisato 
is more of the non-lethal type. <laughs> so when they have this whole incident where Takana, she's supposed to be bodyguarding this one lady, she ends up giving her up to the kidnappers so they can get she can get information about this whole arms deal. And <laughs> she's just opening fire on the car. Chisato finally shows up and goes in with non-lethal. She's using these blood bullets, so, so it makes it look like they're actually getting hit, but it's more to give this this the sense of fear. Oh, my my guy next to me just got shot like crazy, even though he didn't. And then she's able to go in and just shoot this little gun that ties everybody up. So, again, non-lethal versus lethal. Uh, I guess more calm thinking versus logical thinking, I guess, is the, is the way to put it. But, again, that, I think that's where the chemistry is going to come from. And I think Takin is going to have to learn to kind of chill. She's very serious about things. And again, this this department is part cafe, and so they're more chill. So it'll be fun. It'll be interesting. So yeah, the overall plot line is showing the organization they work for. Again, this DA group, which is apparently the one of the bigger groups, getting rid of Takina, somebody pulling strings behind the scenes, this hacker that was involved, which was doing work for this guy that's known as erasing people, and I don't think that hacker's gone, even though he they did he did seem like he wanted to get rid of the hacker. And now this guy that is known as the Eraser is now showing up at the cafe. So we'll see. He seems like he knows the the leader of their group, Mika. So we'll see how he's tied in. It seems like he has some sort of fascination with Chisato. So I'll be interested to see if it's probably his her dad. I'm, I'm that's my initial thought because he's he's like, he's like touching the screen where there's a picture of Chisato, and I'm like yeah, either he's a super creep or he's probably her dad. I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna assume that yeah, Mika's gonna be mad. This guy shows up and is like, no, this is Chisato's dad. I don't want him to have anything. Probably Mika's probably trying to protect Chisato from her dad, and this is gonna be her dad. But anyways, so far really enjoying this. Um, I, I think there's two really key things here. Visually looks fantastic. Again, we have two huge, amazing shows from A1 Pictures that are originals on the same day. So I hope one of these two shows is already done because I really don't want Engage Kiss or Licorice to turn out to fumble. I hope they get, well, again, one is done or they keep up this quality because both these shows are great. And I think especially for Licorice Recoil is it looks visually beautiful. This is kind of in the same vein as something like k -On. Very rounded characters, very flowy characters, hair and everything moves a lot. The characters are very animated, and that is something that I really want to say shines from this show. Additionally, the action scenes are really great, and I think that's a culmination of having a little bit of a a bubbliness to the, the action scenes themselves. Again, technically with Chisato, she's being non-lethal. But it just kind of, how, her, how she comes into the scene, especially with Chisato, comes in the scene, just starts kind of popping gun, the, the shots off, and how she's kind of moving around, like, it looks really good. This isn't as simply, she runs over to a corner, aims, and then characters start flying off. No, this is like, you, you kind of get a shot back and forth between the bad guys and her as she's kind of shuffling around and firing. It looks really good. It, this, again, is something more than, yes, technically they did with Takana at the very beginning when she first confronts the vehicle, she just aims the front of it and starts firing off. That's not that that's that's nothing really animation wise. But how they showed Chisato kind of maneuvering around the vehicle and firing off shots, it looked really good. And I hope that they keep doing that because again, it turns it from something as simple as just mowing down bad guys to turning it into kind of a a shuffle and tactic and how she moves around to guess both illogically <laughs> dodge bullets. But at the same time, it just looks cooler. It's just, it's so much more. It, it's something in the vein of something like, um, I don't know, Jason Bourne or something like that. One of those action flicks where you have guys doing a little bit of gung fu, but really close combat uh, firing. It, 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 like I said, it's just a lot of fun. And like I said, having the music in the background, the characters themselves being really cute and fun looking. It, it's really bad to say they're in a violent show, but it, it has violence in the show. So don't get me wrong. It's just, it, it's doing it so well. And... Additionally, outside of the animation and how gorgeous the characters look and the character designs themselves are gorgeous and they keep on model, it also has chemistry. There is some really great writing here. Just the chemistry between the characters, their interactions, the way they talk and stuff, it feels both natural, very fun, and having some comedic moments in there, very natural comedic moments. Like, I really enjoyed the first scene where we have Takana and Chisato at a cafe. And it has this point when Chisato questions Takana. Oh, so you do want to go back to DA? Well, then why did you shoot? Basically asking why did she break her orders? So it has this kind of thing where Chisato kind of seems like she's very bubbly and ditzy. But at the same time, she thinks still logically. 
it, it, that was kind of a refreshing thing that I found when I started watching the show. When I seen the PVs, I figured Chisato was ganky girl. Everybody's fun. She's really skilled, but at the same time, she she sees everything as positive. But you kind of get these little glimpses that Chisato is supposedly very skilled. You get to see her in action, very skilled. But additionally, she is a logical thinker. She's not just a ditzy girl that's really skilled. She actually does think about things. She's not airheaded. And she does things for a reason. And additionally, when she presses Takina, she's actually legitimately asking, well, why did you break those orders? And she kind of corrects herself like she's not trying to criticize Takina, but she wants to know. And of course, that reveals that Takina at that time believed that she was thinking logically. But this is, of course, trying to uncover the idea of, well, normally, they just cover that up and you move on. Why are they why are they focused on you, Takina? Why did you get transferred? Something is happening. Something behind the scenes is being pulled. Anyways, <laughs> I gushed enough about the show so far. Really fantastic first episode. Like I said, it's gonna be both Engage Kiss and Licorice Koyo are going to be a huge question mark for me. They both have started out very good. They're both visually amazing. Again, I think Licorice Koyo is more cutesy girl, but very well animated. Whereas Engage Kiss is going to be more hyper action and more harem-y. So I'm really curious to see these two hopefully keep really great quality and move forward throughout the weeks. And I'm going to enjoy watching them every single Saturday. Um, this is kind of like reminds me of back when we had like a Kebby's Sailor uniform and my dress up darling on the same weekend from Cloverworks. And it was like this, this fear of one of them falling apart. But Again, hopefully A1 Pictures holds it together. <laughs> I have high expectations for these two shows. But I hope you guys enjoyed my first impressions of Licorice Sequoia. If you did, make sure to hit that like button down below. Comment. Let me know what's the other show if you're going to be checking out. Also, if you've not already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Additionally, if you want to support us more, we have a link to our Patreon, our tips link, and a super thanks button down below. I hope that you would consider supporting us. And I definitely appreciate everybody that does. And y'all take care.